Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Need that? My name's Adam and my job is to make you a little bit better at English every single video. So today is going to be an absolute cracking video for any of you that are going to be sitting AQA language paper 2. I'm especially shouting this out to the November resit kids. I know that you've got your resets coming up pretty soon, so I'm hoping that this will be really useful information for you, how to actually tackle the exam, how to actually go through what you need to go through and get a winning strategy to level up in these exams. Now, this is the first part of an entire course that I've put together. So if you're interested in looking at everything, you can check out the description below. I'm also going to try and make this, this PDF file, once I've added annotations to it, free of charge, like a download that you can have just so that it can help you out as well. So let's start with the basics, language paper two. And in a nutshell, we're going to mostly be looking at the insert paper of the, of the exam, but then just looking back over the questions here and there, just to work everything out. We've got two sections, obviously. I should, I say obviously, it's not here, is it? Two sections. We've got a section A, which is basically a reading section. And the big difference between the reading section of this paper and paper one, I've got a video for that as well that I'll link is that the reading section here also includes comparison. You need to also do some comparison. There's also a section B, and this is a writing section, the same as in language paper one. The difference is for this one, it is transactional, transactional writing. So <laughs> I've run out of space on the edge there, but that's meant to say transactional writing. The difference is creative writing for paper one is literally just creating a, a kind of little descriptive story based on a picture that the AQA exam board give you. Whereas transactional writing, they give you a scenario that you have to argue for or against or advise about. And it's a letter, a newspaper article, magazine, speech, something non-fictional, basically. We've got two extracts to look at for language paper two. We've got a source A, which is here, and then a source B, which is here. And then we've got a bunch of questions that we need to answer. So we're going to read the questions first, and then we're going to mark up the extracts with the prompts that we need and then we would read the extract and we would find the quotes that we need now in this video i'm going to go through that layout for you and then in the rest of the course we're going to go in depth into question two question three question four question five i'm going to do question one with you really quickly because i don't want you worried about this one at all i literally want you to spend no more than two minutes of the paper total on this one okay and you're going to it's very similar to language paper one question one the difference is in this one you actually have to shade in the four true statements out of these eight okay so all you will do as you're reading this is you'll be trying to comprehend what's going on and then honestly you should be able to work out at least three of the four straight away and then you might have to just quickly go back and double check what the fourth one is that's correct or not correct so it's very basic comprehension and we don't typically mark up the extract for question one at all we just comprehend as we read and then we work out the four true statements so that's question one super easy i don't want you worrying about that one at all really then we get to question two now question two is a little bit more complicated it is what's called a comparative summary okay so you're not there is no analysis here okay gonna cross that out with big red letters or sorry big red mark no analysis needed for this one okay all you need to do for this one is you need to notice that in this case the two writers are traveling on different types of trains okay and you need to look at both sources and write a summary of what you understand about the differences between the two trains okay so don't write about things that are similar about the trains because in this case it specifically says differences you need to read the question carefully because sometimes it might say write a summary of what you understand about the similarities between two things and sometimes it will literally just say write a summary comparing two things so if it says differences you need to do differences if it's similarities you need to do similarities and if it just says compare but doesn't say differences or similarities specifically then you could do either you could do a bit of similar a bit of different so the way we're going to mark this up on the extracts is on the sides at the top of the extract we're going to write details of train okay and that's going to be our question two prompt we're going to write that up here as well details of train so what's that's telling you before you actually read the whole extract is that you need to make sure that as you're reading understanding what the writer's talking about 
one of the things anytime something comes up about the train itself you need to highlight that bit and make sure that you're adding that for question two okay so that's question two and what you'll end up with for question two ultimately is a, I, I recommend for the in terms of the timings of this you're going to be spending sort of 11 to 12 minutes total you might add a couple minutes on if you have extra time but about 11 to 12 minutes on this one and that's going to be a roughly two minutes planning and then the remaining nine or ten minutes writing so in terms of the planning what you want to have is just a little table so you'll literally just have a table like that you'll have source a and you'll have a couple things about the train here and then you have source b and you have a couple things about the train here and you're probably aiming for two paragraphs and you're probably looking at four quotes total two from each two from each train uh, two from each source about the differences in the trains okay so pretty straightforward no analysis needed at this point just to help you out a little bit let's just quickly read a tiny bit of sec of source b why not just so that we can see maybe one thing that we could write about in terms of the train here so i notice on line five it says that it was a long bodied vehicle with seats placed across it so we might like compare the fact that the steam engine is a steam engine because this is an older piece we might then look to see if there's anything about the size of the train here obviously this person is in an actual compartment in the train so maybe they're a bit more shut off into one area and this train has a few different bits including a dining car so you might just compare the like the size of the trains and the way they're laid out that might be one of your points of comparison Okay, as I said, this is an overview video. We're gonna go deep into this through the course. But at the moment, I'm just trying to give you like the core essentials that you need for each question. So that was a comparative summary, question two. Question one was a basic comprehension. Now we're on to question three. Now question three is only looking at source A and only looking from lines 12 to 23. And it says, how does the writer use language to describe the train crash? So this is exactly the same as question two of language paper one. The only difference is that this is now 12 marks. So you're wanting to spend around 15 to 16 minutes on this one, okay? And you're probably gonna have two to three minutes planning, and you're probably going to have the remainder writing. So you're looking at anywhere from 12 to 14 minutes writing, depending on your planning and everything. But since it's, and since it's language analysis, language analysis, what you're gonna be aiming for here is two to three paragraphs with two to three quotes in each paragraph, okay? And you're going to be using my lovely acronym, Jam Wins. So in terms of language, you're gonna be trying to find things like interesting juxtaposition. Maybe you're gonna be looking for some alliteration. You're gonna be looking for things like metaphors and maybe some similes as well. I apologize for my handwriting. It's pretty messy today because I'm writing a lot. You're going to be looking at keywords and their connotations, interesting imagery, and then the word classes themselves. So things like nouns, verbs, adverbs, prepositions, etc. Okay. And remember, Jam Wins isn't like the only thing that you want to talk about. It's just a reminder of some of the really good language that you can try to find within the extract. Okay. So the way we're going to mark this up on the extract, we just need to mark something up on source A and just from lines 12 to 23. So we're gonna put language, train crash, okay? Lines 12 to 23, language, train crash. So let's go up here, 12 to 23. We put language or lang and then train crash. If you're, more, if you're a more artistic person than me, you might do a little like explosion, a fire or something. You probably shouldn't do that because that's <laughs> wasting time in the exam. But anyway, anything to do with language around the train crash we're gonna again in the course go into a bit more of a deep dive of what you're looking for here but let's try and get you just one thing in here just quickly yeah so we could do broken both my legs obviously that's quite gory imagery and you've also got the alliteration of the hard b sound broken both so you can analyze that language and show how the train crash is shown to be pretty tragic and pretty full-on based on the plosive alliteration of the b sounds that could be one of your pieces of evidence and there's probably 20 bits of evidence in here that i'll look at in that uh, question three detailed course video okay so we've done question two and three one and two and three and 
now we've got to go on to the big enchilada, which is question four. And this one now is more so a comparative analysis, okay? So you do need to analyze with this one. For question two, you don't really need to analyze, it's just summary. For this one, you're comparing analysis of language. And you can still use jam wins for this. So you can still be looking at language through jam wins. But on top of that, if you want to, you can also look at, at structure for this one. So you might use my acronym FPPS. So you might look out for interesting focal points. You might look out for some interesting pacing. And that pace could be created by punctuation choices or sentence lengths. So those are the major things that I typically recommend you look for when you're doing structure, FPPS. Question, as you can probably tell from my videos at this point, the questions are always pretty predictable. They're in a template and you just have to look for the variables of the template. So question one is always just gonna be looking for the four true statements about the piece to check your comprehension. Question two is always gonna be comparing something, just a summary comparing something in the two extracts. Normally it's a character, normally it's characters or an object. So in this case, it's comparing the trains, the differences between the trains. Question three is always going to be how language is used to describe something. So in, in this case, it was described the train crash. And then question four, it's always going to be compare how the writers convey their feelings and perspectives about something, normally about their experience of whatever they're doing in the extract. So in this case, the two writers have different feelings. Remember, if it says different, do different. If it says compare, you can do different or similar. And obviously if it says similar, then only do similar. But it's always gonna be feelings and perspectives or synonyms of those words. So it might, instead of saying feelings, it might say emotions. Instead of perspective, it might say viewpoint. But it's always gonna be about basically their thoughts and feelings of their experience of whatever they're doing. Okay, really simple. AQO is pretty light, duh. It literally says that in the question, right? Compare the methods the writers use to convey their feelings and perspectives. Again, duh, you're having to analyze, right? Obviously, that's what you're trying to do. And then support your response with references from the texts. Obviously, again, you need to use evidence. So for this one, you're probably going to spend more like 20 minutes. And again, for extra time, students, all of these times that I'm giving you just add a couple of minutes on each of them, really. OK, so for question one, it might be three minutes instead of two. For question two, it might be just a couple minutes more than the sort of 11 or so that I mentioned. It might be another two or three minutes here. It might be more like 22, 23 minutes. OK. Um, I don't want you to have to do maths in the exam because that's it's not a math exam, but it's pretty much just add 20% to what I say, more or less. So in this one, you might even add as much as five minutes. Yeah, but you probably don't want to do much more than 25. So what you're going to do is you're going to, as you're reading through, you do need to mark the extracts up. So I, I personally just put feelings and perspectives on the train journey. And I normally put this up at the top as well. Feelings about train journey I'm gonna try and do something fancy here it's probably gonna fail but I'm gonna try anyway yeah no that's <laughs> it's a disaster that's not what I wanted at all I just wanted to select this text okay nice and then I want to bring this up feelings and perspectives about train journey right so we've now marked up both the extracts we've set ourselves up for success I know that this has been like a 15 minute video or so, but actually what I just described to you, reading the questions, looking for the variables, adding the marks to the question paper should really only take you like two, three minutes maximum. Okay. And then you need to read these extracts pretty quickly. It is a more fast paced exam, unfortunately. So you're looking at around sort of seven, eight minutes to read and analyze each of these questions, each of these inserts now. So seven to eight minutes to read and highlight and if you want to get fancy which i do recommend overall you might also just have different colors of highlighter for the different questions so details about the train you might do in green and that's question two the bit about language of the train crash you might just for ease i'll just do that in yellow so again nice and easy and then you might do blue for example for question four feelings about train journey yeah so it by the end you'll have all these different colors on the page and that's just going to help you more easily make sure that the quotes for question two are right there and clear in green the stuff for question three is really clear in yellow the stuff for question four is really clear in blue 
One other thing I forgot to mention about question four that I want to tell you before we end the video is you do need to be aiming for really similar question three, two to three paragraphs. You're probably going to be looking for about four quotes total. It's going to be two from each extract. Okay. So a total here, most likely of about six quotes, roughly from source one, six quotes, roughly from source two total of about 12 quotes ideally you don't have to do detailed analysis of every single quote that you put in but you do want to try and zoom in and and do a decent amount of analysis on at least in each paragraph at least one quote per extract yeah and you might even want to try and zoom in as well if you can that would be helpful for those of you that have got this far into the video with me i'm going to give you a little bonus now as well which is you might be saying to yourself how do we plan? How do we plan? And you might also be asking about section B writing. That is, there's detailed information about that on the course. So if you need a bit more information about that, you can get it. Anyway, one final thing about planning, and I'm going to go through this question by question for you as a little bonus. Question two, the way that I would do it, like I said, it's a little table. And what you would do is you'd have your point, which is a point of comparison in this case. Yeah. So that's your P point of comparison then you would have your evidence from source one or source a first evidence yeah you might do a very brief explanation of this but it's not analysis you don't have to analyze it you're more just explaining what it shows about the thing in this case what it shows about the train yeah you then have evidence from you then might have another piece of evidence that just supports your first bit of evidence from source a that is optional but it does help strengthen your argument then you have evidence from the second source you have a little explanation from the second source and again this is not analysis and then you go on to possibly having another piece of evidence from that and that's just going to strengthen so basically pee -E or pex however you want to say it but that's basically what you want to do and you want to do two paragraphs like that Okay, it's not that many words. You're probably looking at about 200 words total, something like that. So then we go on to question three. For this one, it is analysis, obviously. So what I recommend you do is you have your point about how the thing is, how, how the train crash is being described in this case. You have a first piece of evidence that you use. You make sure that you go into at least one technique from that evidence, probably from something to do with jam winds. Then you explain how that technique shows that point about the train crash being a certain way and say horrific right or painful you might talk about the plosive b sounds in broken bones was it broken bones something like that what was it exactly uh, broken both sorry broken both in his legs right and then you explain and then you would have probably either an evidence a second evidence so an evidence two or a zoom into something else from that first bit of evidence okay so you might have a second technique if it's a second bit of evidence and then a secondary explanation for that second technique so it's either going to be like pete eat yeah point evidence one technique explain one evidence two technique explain two or it might be pete zeet sort of thing where you zoom in on two things from one really good bit of evidence so that's what you want to do for question three and for this one you're looking at two to three of those paragraphs and you're probably looking anywhere from 300 to 400 words total. If I were doing this, I would do probably usually two more detailed paragraphs of about 200 words each. You can get a lot of analysis in 200 words if you're being efficient. And then we finally got the conveying the different feelings and perspectives. So for this one, you're going to again want to do a bit of a table, right? But the table is probably going to have three columns, actually, not just two. So you're going to have your point of comparison. I'll just put POC for that here. So the difference that you see in their feelings about the train journey, then you've got stuff from source one or source A, and then you've got stuff from source two or source B. Okay. So the, in these sections, you're going to have the quotes. And because you've got 20 minutes on this, you can afford a little bit more time. You might have more like three to four, maybe even five minutes planning. Okay. But once you've got this, once you've got this table, it pretty much writes itself because you've got your point in here. 
then you've got your evidence which you will obviously have techniques and explain in here and then you'll move over and do evidence and techniques and explains in here and again you might do a zoom or you might do a second piece of evidence but that's in a nutshell what you're trying to do for this 16 mark question you're probably uh, or you should be aiming for five to six hundred words so for me i'd normally do two 300 word paragraphs i personally prefer to do fewer longer paragraphs that's not everyone's style if you would rather do three paragraphs at 200 words that's fine heck even if you want to do four paragraphs and aim for sort of 150 words in each that's probably okay but the important thing is that you make sure that you get plenty of analysis make sure that you show the examiner that you are analyzing lots of techniques don't just do one technique over and over like you might be really good at metaphors don't just do metaphor after metaphor try and do a diverse range of different features what they love as well is if you can do what's called the interrelationship or the intermarriage between language and structure that can be really good so if you want any more help with section b i'll try and get a free video out for that as well it's also going to be really in detail on my course so i hope that was really helpful and if you do have any questions please do comment below subscribe if this is useful content for you and yeah i'll try and answer any comments i get thank you